Picture yourself in the cold, in a tent, eating freeze-dried food and wearing all the layers of clothing you can to keep warm. You're surrounded by your teammates and French explorer Albert Michon is sharing stories about his adventures. He tells you how he kayaked in Greenland, how he dove under icebergs, and even dove over polar bear. It feels like a granddad telling you stories of Hansel and Gretel, except that the stories are true and just as unbelievable. This memory, this memory of sitting in the snow, sharing stories, is one of the most beautiful memories I have. For four days, we were isolated from our friends and family. We built igloos, we cozied up to a teapot, and we learned how to retrieve water from snow. We also did ice diving, and not ice diving, as you can see here, a bit more complicated than just ice diving. This training weekend was part of the student-led analog space mission, Ask a Bios. Little bracket here, what is an analog space mission? An analog space mission aims to replicate certain aspects of a space mission, but at reduced price and risk. A test, for example, habitats, astronauts, food, and experiments. But let's go back to that training weekend first. The training weekend was to learn how to work as a team, as we got to know each other. It was to learn how to survive an extreme environment, and it was to learn how to prepare for the space mission. But most importantly, it was about making mistakes. Here, you can see me making a big mistake. As a part of a team bonding exercise, we were going into a frozen lake, and instead of going progressively in the very, very cold water, I slid down at once and couldn't breathe for 30 seconds. Not a cozy feeling, I can tell you. But it was important that we should make mistakes like this. When you train, for example, for an exam, for a space mission, or for a presentation like this one today, you train not only to avoid making mistakes, to prepare the equipment or change uh, things to prevent those mistakes, you also prepare so that you can bounce onto your two feet when you make mistakes. You know that you're resourceful enough. An example is uh, during this training weekend, on the first day, I lost part of my shoe. My shoe was too old, or my shoes were too old, and um, a little bit fell off. By sub-zero temperatures, having your toes sticking out of your shoe is not an optimal condition. But with a plastic bag and two pairs of very thick socks, I managed to save my toes, and I became confident enough that my teammates knew what they were doing, but also that I could survive an extreme environment. Now, let's fast forward to a year and a half after that training weekend. We were six analog astronauts ready to enter our base. We were ready, not only for all the experiments we had to do in the mission itself, but we were ready to overcome any problem that might arise. We had trained in scientific experiments, we had trained in first aid, we had trained in teamwork, we even had trained in cooking and public speaking. But we were focused. For eight days, we were going to spend the day working like astronauts on the International Space Station, up from 6.30 in the morning till 10 or 11 in the night, performing scientific experiments, psychological experiments, base maintenance, and we were 450 meters underground or 1.5k away from the surface of the Earth in pure isolation. From day one, from day one, problems started arising. We were missing equipment, uh, the fuses blew up, the spacesuits we were using were fogging up too much and we couldn't do the experiments. And that might seem normal, but obviously it could be quite problematic. For example, astronauts in the International Space Station perform scientific experiments. Those experiments are developed for several years by those scientists. Many tears, much money is put into those experiments. They are often crucial to those scientists. 
When astronauts perform those experiments, they therefore have a very large duty. And we had the same. We had some experiments, for example, with a filtration soil, pretending it was Martian soil, to make it fit for agriculture. And we're missing the equipment. A scientist had spent several years developing it, and we're missing equipment. But we find the missing cables, we made a makeshift magnet, we find solutions, we change our schedule, and we made the experiment happen. Here, you can see us cozying up in the base. We look quite tired and cold. The reason for this was because after the fuses blew up, we realized that the heaters and the dehumidifiers we were using were actually too powerful. The base normal temperature was 13 degrees Celsius, 89% humidity. It's kind of cold that creeps up into your bones and makes you really tired. But the heaters were too powerful. So we compromised, suited up, and decided we'd save the mission rather than lose the mission experiment. And these kind of failures actually gave us confidence. Every time we had to repair something, every time there was a problem, and we overcame it, we felt confident, we felt in charge, and it was a fantastic feeling. And this gave an amazing insight to space exploration and our Danarok space mission. In short, we failed down here so that we can succeed up there. This is the epitome of analog space missions. NASA, ESA, YAXA, Roscosmos, they all fail down here and then succeed and do the impossible. You've seen SpaceX in the past years. Rocket, pff, blowing up. Rocket, lifting up, coming back, pff, blowing up. And now they send astronauts to space. This is what we need to do, and this is what analog space missions do. Analog space missions can be a few days, a few weeks, months, up to years long, very, very long. They taste spacesuits, habitats, experiments, and they're quite interesting and they're quite different from one another. In 2020, 2021, most of you got to be, to some extent, analog astronauts. You were locked up in your room, isolated from your friends and family, not going outdoors. And probably most of you failed to some extent too. You realized that there were too many calories in a Mars bar, that you couldn't really work from home, and also that you did not need that much toilet paper, frankly. But this isolation, this, this, this deprivation of contact is extremely important for the understanding and the well-being of space exploration and astronauts. Anyway, congratulations, you made it as analog astronauts. Now, the last 20 years, many, many analog space missions have sprouted. And the reason for this is because we're going back to the moon and we're going to Mars. Now you may be briefing for your nose and think, there's no planet B. And yes, you are right. In our solar system, with our current technology, and in our lifetime, there is no planet like Earth. But you have to know this. Space exploration is crucial for an understanding of climate change. Satellites doing Earth observation see deforestation, see the temperature changes, see the CO2 level rising. In addition, astronauts, when they go to space, to see how fragile our Earth is, how thin the atmosphere is, and how much we need to protect it. Lastly, when you're in space, you learn to do more with less. You have to recycle water. You have to maintain your base. You can't just call Amazon and in 50 minutes you get a new part. You have to repair. An example I can give you, when we were training for our analog space mission, for 48 hours, we did a rehearsal of the space mission. We were in a bunker and we had to test communications, experiments, each other, how we behaved in isolation. And we had to measure what we ate and what we drink. And the water was used for hygiene, cooking, cleaning, and obviously drinking. After only 48 hours, I went back to civilization, and I used as much water in one morning than I did in 48 hours of measuring it. And I'm not specially unsustainable. I just didn't realize how much I was using. 
I really believe, I really believe that if each and every one of us behave like an astronaut, not only would we have a planet B, but we'd also have a planet A. We'd have the compassion, we'd have the mindset to further explore, but also we would take care and save our planet A.